What is up, my YouTube fam? Welcome back. What's up guys? I'm in Boulder today. I'm about to get my very first curly haircut. I've heard you need to wash your hair the day or a couple days before in order for it to like look how your curls normally do because they cut it dry and that's why I'm so nervous. I've always gotten my hair cut by like the same few people and you know i think we're all traumatized by a haircut at some point in our lives mine was in middle school i got layers from some random lady and yeah i was traumatized uh until like last year about it so that's good um i'm about to go in i was recommended this salon or a lady in this salon by someone in my mile high shufflers group and she brought a new team member on who's doing like a promotional haircut rate today so i was like fuck it let's do it i don't really know how much i'm gonna get off also just to clarify a curly haircut is done dry like a normal haircut which is what i've always gotten like they wash your hair first normally and then like cut it straight across like this is cut to match your natural curl pattern i don't know i'm nervous we'll see what she does i hope i like it super tired and I'm about to go to bed but this is the hair people so I let her use gel in it I never use any sort of hold product but she's like hey like if you're open I promise your hair will still be soft after you just have to like get the crunch out because I've been traumatized by like mousse cheap mousse crunchy hair I'm really excited to see how it like Houses and falls over the next couple of days. It's very shiny. It almost looks like a little bit oily, but I have very dry hair, so I'm sure that look will go away pretty quickly. Definitely much healthier. I think it'll look really good as the days go by, and then like I can figure out how to style it. It's just gonna, you know, take some getting used to, but I am pleasantly surprised. Okay, curly haircuts, like I don't hate you. I don't hate you. The next day, slept on it. I just woke up and put some water in it and a little bit of product. I feel like it's starting to fall like a little bit more naturally. It does feel very soft. I am extremely shocked that the mousse actually did lose the crunch. Last night, I, I've also completely messed up. This is my life right? on Saturday morning. Good job. Once again, doing another hair check-in. I just went to the gym and showered off my body, which, you know, water always gets on your hair, even if you put it up and try and keep it out of the water. It's just the splashes, splashes get on it. But I'm really liking how it's looking now. This feels more like how my hair normally lays. I think the gel is starting to break up. You know, I'm liking it. Like, I feel like with each passing moment, I like it more. So we're here for it. We love it. Look at them curls, baby. What is up, my YouTube fam? Welcome back to another video with your girl Annie. Today I want to talk about how to travel cheaply. I feel like this is something I've mastered and people come to me a lot for advice on how to get cheap trips because last year I was traveling a bench and I was traveling on a budget more importantly. And I think I have eight 
fabulous tips to help you travel even when you feel broke even when you feel like the coins, they're not a jingling in your pocket, you know? So let's get into it. Tip number one, choose your airline strategically. I have mostly traveled on Spirit or Frontier Airlines, which are both budget airlines. The thing is you gotta be really careful when weighing your airline. Does it include bags? Does it have add-on charges? If you're flying budget, the good thing about that is you can keep things really cheap by traveling lightly. But if you know you're going far away and you're just someone who can't condense your stuff into one small bag that you can bring on the plane, maybe look into some other airlines that have bags included, have other things included, especially if you're taking a long flight, you know, and maybe you're a larger person and you need more space, definitely also look at leg room from airline to airline because that matters. Personally, I like to fly budget airlines because I've mastered the art even as someone who tends to overpack, to put everything into a bag. And I will, I'll show you that bag. It's slightly oversized, but if you roll down the top a little bit, you can fit it in the thingy, even for a budget airlines. That thing they make you put the bag in. And you also just gotta schmooze the gauge in a little bit. You know, if your bag's a little oversized, be like, hey, I loved your announcement earlier. That was fabulous. Step number two, buy your airfare on a Tuesday. So I'm not saying book a flight that departs on a Tuesday. I'm saying on any given Tuesday, go on your little internet machine and look up flights on that day. For some reason, flights tend to be listed cheaper when you buy on a Tuesday. Don't ask me why, I will link the article that I found about this below, but it's so true. If you're booking, especially like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I don't know what it is about looking for flights those days, but it just causes prices to be exponential. Maybe it's because everyone's looking on those days. Yeah, I don't know the science behind it, but book on a Tuesday. Number three kind of ties into tip number one, travel lightly. Traveling lightly not only saves you money, but it saves you time. You don't have a large bag that you're digging through to find your things. And the more organized you can be, the better. You're gonna be able to travel with a smaller bag. If you put all your makeup in one little area or even if you have one of those like vacuum seal bag things and you can make things small, that's gonna be your best bet to traveling cheaply because that way it opens up a world of smaller budget airlines you could possibly use. Honestly, flying budget airlines has saved me the most money out of everything. I know it's not for everyone, so I have some other tips for you. But seriously, if you can manage to be in an uncomfortable seat for just a few hour flight and travel lightly, it's just going to open up so many more traveling opportunities for you because you're not such a stickler about like, oh, I only fly Delta or oh, I have to have a checked bag or whatever. Number four, be flexible with your dates. Save your money for those hard dates that you're unable to move and you know that flight prices might not be so good for those. When you're planning a little bit more sporadically and a little bit more flexibly, it gives you opportunity to plan a trip based around cheaper flights. I would find a cheap flight to a place I wanna go and plan a trip around that. And that is exactly what allowed me to travel so much last year. If you're hard set, once again, on certain dates, it's just almost inevitable that you're gonna spend more money. And that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles with that. Step number five, stay with family or friends if at all possible. I would say that lodging and transportation is going to be one of your biggest expenditures when you're traveling besides dining out or shopping. If you can save some money, even on a little part of your trip, it could really save you big time in the long run and open up your traveling possibilities. If you don't have someone to stay with in the area that you're going to, I would say use discounted services. Some workplaces have discounted car programs. Ask a friend if they work for a company that has cheaper hotel rates. You can also just use sites like Priceline. You can cross compare. You can choose to take alternative transportation like a train, public transit. This is something I did when I visited my sister in LA in November of last year and it saved my boyfriend and I so much money. Jack and I have also taken light rails before when we went to Seattle a couple years ago. We took a cheap Amway train down from Seattle to Portland and that trip was completely planned and around budgeted services that we use from family and friends who had travel discounts. So it was super reasonable what we spent. Number six, 
travel with people. Now, there's something to be said for traveling alone. I think it is so empowering. You don't have to wait around for the right person to travel with. So if you wanna travel alone, do it up. I am here for it. The only reason I say travel with people is one, because it can enrich your experience, but two, it cuts your costs in half. If you're splitting it with just one other person, 50% discount, baby. Like, split it all, baby. I mean, maybe not the airfare. But if you're doing road trips, this is awesome. Just splitting gas prices, things like that. Food costs, if you're getting an Airbnb and you're splitting food. It makes for a super fun experience where you don't feel like your bank account got robbed. And guess what, sweetie? I bad news. Your bank account got held up by you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to be the one to deliver that news, but it was you. Tip number seven. I say this with a grain of salt. Consider credit card offers. If you're someone who's serious about having traveling being a part if you're someone who's serious about travel being a part of your lifestyle, this might actually be a very smart move for you. I actually got a Frontier credit card last year because they had a promotional deal where you basically got a free flight just for signing up for the card and a waived like annual fee or something. And I've just put things I was spending money on anyways on that credit card and I pay it off at the end of the month. And that way it keeps you out of trouble with credit card debt, but I'm also getting miles or points with the airline for money I was going to spend anyway. So that's been really awesome because now I can use those points towards future trips. There's a lot of really great credit card travel offers out there. I will link some helpful articles from Nerd Wallet in the caption below. They're a really helpful website for helping you compare what the actual value is that you're getting out of a card. If there's any promotional offers that might make, you know, one card with one airline more attractive to you. There's also like third party travel credit cards with different banks that work with many different airlines. So there's a lot of options out there for cheap traveling. And if you're financially responsible and you're serious about travel and you want a way to get more points and perks for traveling, I would definitely say travel credit cards could be a great option for you in that case. Lastly, I encourage you, number eight, to think outside of the box. I already mentioned earlier that my boyfriend and I have taken trains, light rails, like public bus transit to save some money, but there's always, always, always out of the box ways to save money when you're traveling. It could be something as simple as finding local unique experiences that don't have to be a resort, <laughs> you know, at this like very luxurious location. It could be meeting up with a local or, you know, bumping into someone at a coffee shop and asking them what some of their favorite nearby cheap spots are to check out. When I was in LA, we stumbled upon a cute little house concert when my sister, her husband, my boyfriend and I were walking back from getting dinner one night and that was such a vibe. Very unexpected. It was totally for free. It was just like a house party we walked into and that was so fun and so unique. I don't think there's any need for you to spend away just because you're on vacation. We look at travel as like getting on a plane or getting in a car and going for a really long car ride. But there's also a lot to be said for the areas that you probably live around. Travel is all around us and sometimes taking a moment out of your day to think critically about, okay, maybe there's something somewhat local that could still be travel, you know? It's good to think outside the box that way and not feel like you have to spend all this money or you have to book a flight to go travel and experience something new. Cause that's the point of travel, right? Like. It's to relax, rest, and have new experiences. So I hope those eight tips were helpful for you today. If you think of any others, drop them in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.